Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Alfano, and I am the Instructional Technology Coach for the Peekskill City School District. In today's video, I will be giving you an introduction to GoGuardian. After logging into GoGuardian, the first thing you will want to do is import a Google Classroom. To do this, we will click on Import Google Classroom. In the pop-up window that appears, you will select the Google Classroom you wish to import. If you do not see one of your classrooms, click here to reconnect your Google account. In this example, I will click on Test Classroom, and then I will click on Import Classroom. Once your classroom has successfully imported, you will be brought to the Students page. Here, you will see all of the students currently enrolled in your Google Classroom. GoGuardian will automatically sync your Google Classroom roster every two hours. If you need to sync your roster sooner, you can click Sync Students from Google. To return to the Classes page, we can click on Classrooms on the left side of our window. We can now see a tile for our test classroom. Each additional classroom that you import will appear here with a unique tile. You can use this drop-down menu to sort your classes in a number of different ways. To begin a session to monitor your students, you can click on Start Class. You can choose to start the class with the chat feature on or off, and you can choose the length of your session using the preset options provided, or you can set a custom end time. Once you are ready, you can click Start Class to begin your session. After starting your session, you will be brought to a dashboard that will show you all of your students' screens in one place. In our example, we only have one student showing, but on your dashboard, you will see all of your students. Student tiles can be sorted by first or last name or by their online status. You can also adjust the size of the tiles using this slider here. When looking at an individual tile, you will first see the student name at the top. Underneath the student name, you will see a live view of each student's screen. Notice how this view updates as the student switches between tabs. At the very bottom of a student's tile are icons that represent each additional tab that they have open on their Chromebook. If you hover over an icon, you can see the name of the web page, the URL, and the option to close the tab, and an option to open this web page in a new tab on your computer. Next, we will take a look at the detailed student view by clicking on a student's tile. Here, we can see a larger view of the student's screen. Note that this view is also live and will update in real time. On the right side of this window, you can see the active tab that the student has open, the other tabs the student has below that, and an option to close any of these tabs remotely with the push of a button. Let's say, for example, this student should not have Edpuzzle open. We can click the close button next to that tab and this window will be closed for the student. Along the bottom of this window are a few additional options. The first option is Exclude Student. This will allow you to exclude a student from your session, and you will not see their activity for the rest of the session. The second option allows you to open a new tab for your student. In this example, let's say students were supposed to be on alex.com. I can type the website into the field provided, click Open Tab, and this website will be opened for the student and will become the active tab on their screen. The third option is to lock the student's device. You have the option to enter a message that will appear on the student's screen and then click lock screen. The student will be unable to use their Chromebook until the teacher unlocks their device. The fourth option is screenshot. This allows you to take a screenshot of what is currently on the student's screen. Screenshots will be saved in the screenshots tab on the dashboard. The final option is annotate. Since teachers are not able to control the keyboard or mouse of a student using GoGuardian, the annotate feature will allow the teacher to make marks on the student's screen that will fade away after 10 seconds. You also have the option to chat individually with a student using GoGuardian. To do this, click on the chat tab and then be sure to turn the chat feature on. You can then chat privately with a student. Next, we will take a look at off-task alerts. To start, we will click the button to ensure the feature is turned on. 
This feature uses artificial intelligence to alert you when a student may be off task. You will first select the class subject. In this example, we will choose math. Next, you will choose the sensitivity. Lenient will alert you if a student is off task for more than 60 seconds. Moderate will alert you after 30 seconds and strict will alert you after 15 seconds. Now watch as the student switches to the math homework document. At a glance, it may appear that the student is on task since the title of the document is math homework and they are working in a Google Doc. You will see that a yellow box appears around the student's tile, indicating that they may be off task. To investigate this further, we will click on the student's tile. Here, we can see that the student was using a shared Google Doc as a place to chat with a friend. At the bottom, one student even mentions how they can't believe Mr. Alfano thinks they're actually doing their math work right now. This is no match for GoGuardian. We can look to the right side of the screen where the yellow highlight indicates the off-task behavior, and we can click to close this tab remotely. Since the alerts are set to math, we may see other tabs, such as the ELA essay, appear off task as well. For now, we will turn this feature off for the remainder of the demo. On our dashboard, we can see that we have additional tabs. The Timelines tab will give you a scrollable, minute-by-minute -minute account of what each of your students was doing during the class session. You can click and drag to scroll. Any sections highlighted in yellow indicate potential off-task behavior. You can also click on any section to see more details. The Screenshots tab is where you can find all of your screenshots. You can choose to save your screenshots to your Google Drive or download them to your computer. The Call Students tab provides options for voice calls, video calls, and lecture style presentations. The next feature we will learn about is called Scenes. We can access scenes by clicking on the button on the left side of our screen. There are two types of scenes you are able to create. The first is an allowed websites list. In this type of scene, students can only access the websites that you allow and everything else will be blocked automatically. The second type of scene is a blocked websites list. In this type of scene, students are free to browse any website they can typically access except the websites that you specifically block. I already created a scene that's called Math Class. To see the details of this scene, I will click on the gear icon and then click Edit. Here, you can see that this scene only allows students to access two websites, Alex and Edpuzzle. You can also see that both tabs are set to automatically open and at the bottom, students are limited to opening a maximum of two tabs. To start using a scene, I will first return to the session dashboard by clicking on the test classroom session at the top of my screen. From there, I will click where it says no scene applied. Here, I have the option to create a new scene or enable one of my saved scenes. Take note of the test student screen before I enable this scene. Once I enable the scene, you will notice that the student's other tabs have been closed and Edpuzzle and Alex have been opened automatically. While the scene is enabled, students will only be able to access the websites that I have specified and they will not be able to open more than two tabs. To disable the scene, click on the name of the scene at the top right and then click Disable Scene. Your session will end after the specified time has been reached. If you wish to end your session early, you can click on the red button that says End Session, and then confirm and click End Session again. You will see a number of options presented to you, such as viewing your classes, viewing your timeline, your screenshots, and a log of all your commands. Once a session is ended, you will receive an email with a summary of your session. If you choose, you can disable this functionality in your classes settings. I hope that you found this introduction to GoGuardian helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.